Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today we're beginning a new series and we're looking at Paul's letter to the Philippian Christians. We won't be going at the same pace as we've done some of the Old Testament scripture because the New Testament has uh, so many jewels to enjoy. I've entitled this particular devotion, I Thank God for You. We read this. To all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may, may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ to the glory and praise of God. It's always good to just have a look at a little bit of background to this letter to the Philippians. So Paul had a deep affection for this church of Philippi because he was the one who instituted the church. He founded the church. This is the first European church of God. And so it held, it held a special place in Paul's affections. We read about Paul's uh, time in Philippi in Acts chapter 16. And so Paul is in a different place. He's in Asia Minor. He's in modern day Turkey. And we read this. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the visions, we, get, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Macedonia is a province. Philippi is one of the leading cities of Macedonia and it is what we would call a Roman colony. So first of all, it's the first European city to hear the gospel. Secondly, it's a Roman colony. Now, a Roman colony works like this, that Roman soldiers, of course, serve right throughout the Roman Empire, which is just a huge empire. And they would give up something like 29 years of their life serving the emperor, serving in the armies of Rome. But if they managed to survive till the end, and of course not many of them did, their reward was that they would get some land to farm on and perhaps uh, other help in setting up a business. And so Philippi is a Roman colony filled with ex-Roman military people in Greece, in Macedonia. The uh, the emperor always thought it was good to have well-trained troops or people that have, were, we would consider veterans, you know, on the outskirts of the empire. They could serve as, uh, as a first line of defense against invading tribes. There in Philippi, Paul first of all meets Lydia, who's a dealer in purple cloths, and she's a God-fearer. She's been proselytized by Jewish people, Jewish missionaries. She's become a God-fearer and she was very open to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And she became one of the first people in Philippi to be converted to the faith. We also meet the Philippian jailer and many of us are familiar with that story where uh, there was an earthquake. Paul and Silas had been placed in jail because they had caused uh, quite a bit of uh, turbulence in Philippi. They had cast out a demon in a demon possessed girl, which upset the owners of that girl because she foretold the future. And uh, there was a whole lot of movement 
a lot of anger against them and they ended up in jail. And as we know, the, there was an earthquake during the night, the doors of the jail opened, the, the jailer was about to commit suicide, Paul and Silas stopped him doing so, he became another convert and was baptised into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's an amazingly successful ministry that Paul had in, Rome, in Philippi. And in fact, when he left the place, there was a whole body of believers there. So Paul has a lot of affection for this church. He addresses them in a beautiful way. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's pe holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful greeting to the church there, the church that had supported him and continued to support him in his ministry. And he just wants to greet them all and bless them. And he blesses them with this wonderful greeting, grace and peace to you. The next section really stands out for us. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It's just a beautiful piece of scripture. What gives Paul joy? It's being in partnership with other Christians for the sake of the gospel. And the Philippian Christians, as I mentioned earlier, had supported Paul right through his ministry because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I think that's such a wonderful thing to remember, isn't it? That when we serve together, we get joy in our lives. We're part of this worldwide movement of the gospel going out into the world and it just gives us great joy. People that work in groups for, the, for a common purpose, it produces in you a real happiness, a joy in God for that unity and that peace and that common commitment to the gospel. And, uh, you know, that, that work continues on till Jesus returns. So Paul prays about that and he thanks the Lord for them. Paul prays for their growth. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Again, just a standout piece of scripture. It's just so heartwarming. So Paul has this amazing affection for this church, but his prayer is this, that they grow that they mature in their faith, that it produces in them wonderful works of righteousness, that is good things that they do, that people would know they are Christians by their love and by the, their fruit. It's a wonderful prayer for a pastor. Praying for his church, for an elder, for a deacon to pray for his church. It's a wonderful prayer for a parent to Think about their children and pray that they would grow and be partners with them for the sake of the gospel. Any kind of Christian leader, it's a wonderful prayer to pray. We want to see growth. So I love this piece of scripture. You know, they're partners in the gospel. And that is what it is to be a Christian. You can't just be, Christianity is not a spectator sport, but it's a partnership. A partnership in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and it produces joy in our hearts. If we're just spectators, we don't get the same joy as we would in being participants, sharing in all the joys that belong to serving Christ in the world. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the that we can, can we can begin this new book, this letter of Paul to the Philippians. We do pray, Lord, that you would encourage us as we read through this particular letter and that we would grow. Help us, Lord, not to be spectators in the gospel, but participants in the gospel. Help us to be men and women who pray for those we serve with, who love those we serve with. And Lord, that we can pray for the growth of those uh, who we serve with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.